Most people know zinc as one of the most important minerals for the immune system. It's often the first supplement people grab when they feel a cold coming on, and for good reason. Zinc has been shown in multiple studies to reduce the duration of common colds, support wound healing, improve testosterone levels, and even help skin health. But here's the surprising part that almost no one talks about. Taking too much zinc can actually hurt your health, not because zinc itself is toxic in moderate amounts, but because high levels of zinc lower another vital mineral in your body, copper. And when copper levels drop, it sets off a chain reaction of health problems. Your immune system weakens, your energy production slows down, down, your blood health suffers, and even your brain and nervous system can take a hit. So today, I will dive deep into the science of how zinc and copper interact, why this balance is so important, and how to supplement zinc the right way. Let's start with zinc. Zinc is what scientists call an essential trace mineral. That means your body can't make it, you absolutely have to get it from your diet. The best food sources are oysters, red meat, poultry, beans, nuts, and whole grains. In the body, zinc is everywhere. It's a cofactor for over 300 different enzymes. That means hundreds of processes, from digesting food, to repairing DNA, to producing hormones, all depend on zinc. Without it, these processes slow down or break down entirely. That's why zinc deficiency can cause such a wide range of problems, from frequent infections, to hair loss, to loss of taste and smell. No wonder so many people take zinc supplements. But here's where it gets tricky. When you take zinc in high amounts, especially from supplements instead of food, it starts to interfere with another mineral, copper. Zinc and copper share the same absorption pathway in the small intestine. Think of it like a one-lane road where both minerals are trying to get through at the same time. If you load the system with way too much zinc, zinc hogs the road and copper can't get absorbed properly. Over time, this creates what's called a secondary copper deficiency. You're not deficient because you aren't eating copper. You might be getting plenty from foods like nuts, seeds, or shellfish. The problem is, your body can't absorb it properly because zinc is blocking the way. And this isn't just speculation, it's well documented in research. A classic study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition gave healthy men 50 milligrams of zinc every day for just six weeks. The result? Their copper levels dropped significantly. Another study in clinical nutrition confirmed that even moderate zinc supplementation, when taken long-term, can create a copper deficiency. The NIH actually warns about this on their fact sheet for zinc. They set the upper limit for safe daily intake at 40 milligrams. Anything consistently above that can put you at risk of copper deficiency. And here's the kicker. Many zinc supplements on the market come in doses of 50 milligrams or more, and immune-boosting lozenges often go even higher. So it's incredibly easy to tip the balance without realizing it. But you may be thinking, why does copper matter so much? Copper is also an essential trace mineral and it's involved in some of the most fundamental processes in your body. First, copper is needed for energy production. Inside every cell, your mitochondria act like little power plants, producing ATP, the energy currency your body runs on. Copper is a cofactor for the enzyme cytochrome C oxidase, which sits inside the mitochondria and helps drive this energy process. Without copper, energy production slows down and you feel tired, weak, and drained. Second, copper is critical for immune function. Studies show that copper deficiency impairs white blood cell activity, especially neutrophils, which are your first line of defense against infections. Low copper doesn't just weaken immunity, it can actually make you more prone to repeated infections, which is pretty ironic because a lot of people take zinc to boost their immunity, but without copper, the opposite happens. Third, copper is vital for blood health. It plays a central role in iron metabolism. Specifically, copper is required for the enzyme ceruloplasmin, which helps mobilize iron so it can be used to make hemoglobin, the oxygen-carrying protein in red blood cells. Without copper, iron gets trapped in storage and hemoglobin production drops. The result is anemia-like symptoms, fatigue, pale skin, weakness, and shortness of breath. Fourth, copper is important for the nervous system. It helps form myelin, the protective sheath around your nerves. Low copper can lead to neurological problems, numbness, tingling, difficulty walking, and even cognitive decline in severe cases. And finally, copper is involved in connective tissue formation, heart health, and antioxidant defense. It's not just some minor mineral. It's a powerhouse nutrient that your body can't function without. So when you flood your body with zinc and push copper down, you're interfering with multiple systems at once. Now here's where balance comes in. Zinc and copper 
are what nutritionists call antagonistic minerals. That means they push against each other. Too much zinc lowers copper. Too much copper can, in rare cases, lower zinc. The body is always trying to keep them in balance. That's why many high-quality zinc supplements are actually paired with copper. You'll often see a ratio like 10 to 1 or 15 to 1. That means for every 10 or 15 milligrams of zinc, you get about 1 milligram of copper. This ratio comes from both clinical observation and research. It seems to protect copper status while still giving you all the benefits of zinc. For example, a supplement with 30 milligrams of zinc will often include 2 milligrams of copper. That's enough to keep the balance without overloading either mineral. Now, if you're just getting zinc from food, you usually don't have to worry. Whole foods contain a natural balance of minerals, but if you're supplementing zinc daily, especially at doses above 20 to 30 milligrams, it's smart to make sure you're getting copper alongside it. Let's talk numbers for a second. The recommended daily allowance for zinc is about 11 milligrams per day for men and 8 milligrams per day for women. For copper, it's around 900 micrograms per day for adults. Most people can meet these needs with a balanced diet, but when you add supplements, things change. A lot of people take 30 to 50 milligrams of zinc daily for immunity, skin, or testosterone. That's already two to five times the daily requirement. If copper isn't added, you're setting yourself up for imbalance. And the symptoms of copper deficiency aren't always obvious at first. It might start as subtle fatigue, more frequent colds, or difficulty concentrating. Over time, it can progress to anemia, neurological changes, and immune dysfunction. That's why being proactive matters. So, what's the right strategy if you're supplementing zinc? First, check the dosage. If you're taking more than 20 to 30 milligrams daily for an extended period. Make sure your supplement also contains copper. Second, look for that ratio we talked about, about 10 to 1 to 15 to 1, zinc to copper. That's what most integrative doctors and nutrition experts recommend. Third, pay attention to your diet. Foods rich in copper include shellfish like oysters and lobster, nuts and seeds like cashews and sunflower seeds, dark chocolate, and organ meats like liver. Including these foods regularly can help balance things out naturally. And finally, remember that balance is the key. Zinc is amazing for your immune system, your hormones, and your healing. But without copper, those benefits eventually backfire. The two minerals are partners. You need both. But do you know what we use more than zinc? It's cooking oil. If you are using canola oil, watch this video where I talked about why you shouldn't use canola oil.